Simvastatin, also known by its original brand name Zocor, is one of the most famous and best-selling drugs of all time. It is a statin and it is the second most prescribed of all of the different statins available, second only to a torvastatin, known often by its original brand name Lipitor. It's a prescription medication and it's taken once a day at night just before bed. And there are three main doses available of it, the smallest being 10 milligrams, the middle dose being 20 milligrams and the highest dose being 40 milligrams. And of course, the higher dose you take, the more strong is the effect that it's going to have. The most common dose for people to be on is 20 milligrams, the middle dose. For all the statins, it can be difficult to convince people to reliably take them. And I think the reason for that is that the effect of the drug is invisible. Usually people take this drug and feel no different whatsoever and then they get into a mindset where they're suspicious about what the drug is doing because they're taking this pill that they see as a synthetic chemical that they're putting into their body, which it is of course, and they're not seeing it do anything, they're not seeing any effect. So they then think, well, why am I taking this drug and what damage is it potentially going to do to me in the long term? I don't want to be taking something if it's doing nothing and it's potentially going to cause me harm in the long term. So people can get very suspicious of statins and reluctant to take them. And that's the case even though they nearly never cause side effects. In particular, if you're taking the normal dose of simvastatin, the 20 milligrams a day, it's very unlikely that that's going to cause any side effects whatsoever. As I said earlier, usually people take these drugs and feel no different whatsoever. At higher doses, such as maybe 40 milligrams of simvastatin, it's more possible that you might experience some side effects. But usually, again, it will be tolerated completely. And if you do get side effects, it might be very minor. So I think the suspicion around statins does come from the fact that the effect of them is invisible. If you contrast them, for instance, to dermatology, dermatologists can prescribe some incredibly strong medicines. Take, for example, the condition psoriasis. Dermatologists can treat this with the drug methotrexate, an incredibly potent immunosuppressant with a huge number of side effects. And people will happily take that drug despite all of the side effects because they can actually see what it's doing. They can actually see it make their psoriasis better. Meanwhile, with statins, drugs that nearly always have no side effects, because the effect is invisible, patients can't see what it's doing for them, what good it's doing for them, they become suspicious and reluctant to take it. So what do statins do then? Well, they are the cleaners of the arteries. They treat a condition called atherosclerosis, which is a vascular condition that affects the arteries within the body. And it's a condition that will affect all of us at some point in our life to differing degrees. Now, people who are worse affected by this condition are people of higher BMIs, people who smoke are also more affected by this condition, and people with a bad family history for this happening, they are more likely to get this worse as well. So I've drawn a picture here that illustrates the basics of what happens to an artery undergoing atherosclerosis. So this is a nice healthy artery. This is drawn in cross sections. So this is the lumen of the artery where the blood flows. And then this is the wall of the artery. So this is representing a healthy artery. In atherosclerosis, what happens is the wall gets thicker and the lumen gets narrower because fatty cholesterol deposits have built up in the inner part of the wall of the artery. This process is known as atherosclerosis. And this is a process that takes years and years to happen. So when we're children or teenagers, our arteries look like this. As we get older in life, our arteries begin to look more and more like this. And the speed at which these fatty deposits accumulate depend on your risk factors for atherosclerosis. So if you're overweight, if you smoke, if you've got a strong family history for this happening, atherosclerosis will happen quicker in you and your arteries will get narrower at a greater rate. So this process can happen all over the body and you can see that it's going to narrow the lumen of the artery and reduce the blood flow to the part of tissue that is supplied by that artery. 
Now, two places that we're particularly concerned about this happening in are the heart and the brain. And when the arteries that supply the heart are being narrowed due to atherosclerosis, we call that condition coronary artery disease, or CAD for short. And when the arteries that supply the brain with blood are being narrowed due to atherosclerosis, we call that cerebrovascular disease, or CVD for short. And you can imagine that this chronically worsening low perfusion to the heart and the brain is not going to be good for the function of either of these two vital organs. Now the story gets even worse because these diseased arteries that are affected by atherosclerosis are at risk of a process called thrombosis, which is where a blood clot is formed within a blood vessel. Now remember, the blood is supposed to clot only when a blood vessel is injured and there is a hole in the wall of the blood vessel. In that case, the blood is supposed to form a solid clot in order to plug the hole in the wall of the blood vessel. When the blood clots inside a perfectly intact blood vessel, that is a process that we call thrombosis. And when it occurs inside an artery, we call that arterial thrombosis. When it occurs inside a vein, we call it venous thrombosis. Now, arteries that are affected by atherosclerosis are at risk of arterial thrombosis. I've drawn this on the picture over here. So here is our atherosclerosis affected artery and this green thing that I've drawn inside the lumen of the artery. This is a thrombus, which is the name given to a blood clot that has formed inside a perfectly intact blood vessel. Now, arterial thrombosis is a disaster because, of course, the thrombus can completely occlude the lumen of the artery and therefore completely cut off blood flow to the portion of tissue that is supplied by that artery. If that blood clot is not broken down quickly and blood flow is not restored to that downstream portion of tissue, that portion of tissue will then die due to lack of blood flow, a process called infarction. So if you have coronary artery disease or cerebrovascular disease, you are then at risk of having arterial thrombosis events occurring within your heart and your brain respectively, and therefore at risk of parts of your heart or your brain dying due to lack of blood supply. In the heart, when this happens, we call it a heart attack. In the brain, when this happens, we call it a stroke. So overall, atherosclerosis, I hope I've convinced you, is a very bad thing. This is the invisible condition that statins are treating. If you take a statin every day, it will at the very least slow the atherosclerosis progression down, if not stop it completely, and in many people it will even start to reverse it, so the atherosclerotic plaques inside the walls of your arteries will get smaller, this is why I call the statins the cleaners of the arteries. And the condition isn't actually that invisible. You just can't see the atherosclerosis from looking at the outside of a person. However, when you do uh, scan someone's body, if you, for instance, do a CT scan of someone's thorax, for instance, you can get brilliant pictures of the aorta, which is the huge blood vessel that comes straight out of the heart, the huge artery straight out of the left ventricle. And you can see the atherosclerosis on these scans. So it isn't an invisible condition, it's just not visible from the outside, but you can see it with mod modern medical imaging. So overall, they are wonderful drugs. They nearly always are completely tolerated with no side effects and they are cleaning your arteries. So if you take a statin, please do think that of it as doing that, that it is cleaning your arteries, stopping atherosclerosis from getting worse and maybe even reversing some of it and increasing the blood flow to all the tissues of your body by doing so, in particular your heart and your brain. So just before we finish, let's finally discuss the main side effect that people can experience with statins, which is muscle pain. So statins, unfortunately, in some people, even when taken at the normal dose, can irritate the muscle tissues of the body and lead to muscle aches, a condition that we call myalgia. These muscle aches can occur all over the body. They're nearly always not dangerous, but they can be very painful and therefore they can be a reason that people will have to stop taking statins. 
The situation where the muscular effects of statins can become dangerous is in overdose. Now, overdose is nearly always accidental and comes from drug interactions rather than someone deliberately trying to overdose on their statin. The way this occurs is that statins are broken down and inactivated in the liver by an enzyme called CYP3A4. Now, lots of drugs can inhibit this enzyme, and if you take those drugs at the same time as taking a statin, such as simvastatin, then the breakdown of the statin will be inhibited and the levels of it will go up in the blood. And then when those levels go up, that is when the statins can actually irritate the muscle tissue to the point that it's dangerous and they can actually cause the muscle tissue to break down a condition called rhabdomyolysis. Now, I want to stress in normal doses of statins, they nearly never cause irritation of the muscle tissue bad enough to actually cause it to break down, to actually result in rhabdomyolysis. Instead, they just cause harmless muscle aches. It's only in the overdose scenario that it can lead to this dangerous consequence. Remember the very famous quote from Paracelsus, the dose makes the poison, where he's saying that all drugs are poisonous if you'll take them at a big enough dose. Remember that the drug paracetamol, which I prescribe to every patient who comes onto my ward, if that's taken in overdose, it can poison the liver and cause horrific liver failure that can result in death. So all drugs are poisonous if they are given in a high enough dose, and statins are no different. When taken as a normal dose, they will not cause dangerous side effects. So it's therefore very important when taking statins and when prescribing to people who are taking statins to be aware of this interaction. And by the way, not all statins are metabolized by CYP3A4, but the two most commonly prescribed ones, atorvastatin and indeed simvastatin, the topic of this video, they are metabolized by CYP3A4. So this interaction is important to know about. So one of the major examples of a drug which inhibits this enzyme CYP3A4 is the antibiotic chlorifromycin that's used to treat a huge number of different infections, including chest infections, skin infections, etc. It's a very potent inhibitor of CYP3A4. So if you wanted to prescribe this antibiotic to someone who takes simvastatin, you would want them to stop taking the simvastatin for the duration of the time whilst they're on the antibiotic, because if they were to take both at the same time, this would inhibit this enzyme and the simvastatin levels within the blood could build up to dangerous levels and potentially irritate the skeletal muscle tissue enough to cause rhabdomyolysis, which is dangerous. The reason being that when the skeletal muscle tissue dies, it releases a lot of myoglobin into the blood. The myoglobin is filtered by the kidneys and is actually extremely nephrotoxic and can result in lots of the nephrons inside the kidneys dying that may uh, result in a reversible or potentially irreversible drop in renal function. So rhabdomyolysis is not a good thing. You need to take every precaution to avoid it. So we'll end there. Thank you for watching this video. My overall message is that statins are phenomenally good drugs and you shouldn't be afraid to take them and you shouldn't be afraid to prescribe them.